You know, I think everyone is on their own spiritual journey in their own unique and special way. Uh, for me, I was raised a uh, Christian Methodist, uh, although we weren't highly engaged or active in the church. And during those more impressionable years of when I was a teenager, I hardly ever attended. So when I was in college, I was actually an agnostic. I didn't really believe that God cared much for me or anyone else for that matter. Um, shortly thereafter, graduating from college, I had lodged over 40 sleeping pills into my stomach hoping to die. And I can remember it vividly as if it happened yesterday. And I recall crying out on Jesus. Here's a Jesus that I didn't even believe in. And I was crying out, Jesus, help me, help me. And uh, shortly after that, I became a Christian. And I remember two things uh, when I became a Christian. The first thing is uh, I never heard the word salvation or immortality. And isn't that strange? Here I was, an educated man, and it's as if my ears were plugged. I never heard salvation. I never even recall seeing that word. And uh, I mean, you have the Salvation Army during Christmas time, right, around you. And uh, so those two words were fascinating to me. The second thing is uh, I embraced God as my father. I ran to him as a child. I desperately needed him. I was a broken person. I was broken prior to that conversion and I was even broken afterwards for some period of time and I was in a healing process. I would um, go deep into the mountains uh, where my grandmother lived in Sweet Valley, Pennsylvania. Up and I would walk a mile up into the hills and, uh, and pray on my knees to my father. Um, after that, I, I, um, I got involved in a small Christian group. It was a very fundamental group, a uh, Bible-believing group. I was only with them a short period of time. And at the same time, uh, a Pentecostal uh, couple was tutoring me. And uh, I was very naive, maybe through my ignorance, but maybe more so uh, I was actually shocked uh, that Christians didn't agree with one another. That was brand new to me. Uh, here they are reading the Bible, they call themselves Christians, and they disagreed on some major things. So um, the minister of that little church, he would always, uh, he seemed to have an answer for everything, a Bible verse. And I can't say I was overly impressed with all of his answers, so it kind of compelled me to go out one night and, and again on the mountainside and pray. And I remember praying to the Lord that uh, I just wanted to know truth. Uh, I remember using the illustration of A through Z and I said, Lord, I don't need to know A through Z. I don't need to know everything about everything. I don't need to know something about everything. I just want to know truth. I, I desire truth. Uh, if all you were ever to show me is A and B, I'll be perfectly happy with that. Uh, after that, uh, maybe within a few weeks or a month or so, I got involved in a house meeting which led me to a conference in West Palm Beach which led me to a little blue book called Grace that was given to me. And in that book, it was filled with the ideas of the restitution of all, the reconciliation of all, the redemption of all. I don't recall seeing the word universalism at that time. And that led me to start looking at the doctrines. I got my hands on everything I could that supported the reconciliation of all men. And I got my hands on everything that was contrary to it. And as far as I was concerned, it was plain as day right there in front of me of what the scriptures, it, I think it was very clear. Um, I mean, how can you deny that, you know, where it says in Timothy, God will have all men to be saved. And it's a very strong word. It's thelos. It's not just desire. It's not, you know, wishing upon the stars or making a birthday wish. You know, how can you overlook the fact where Jesus, where it said on the propitiation, uh, of all, you know, for the sins of the world, the satisfaction or the mercy seat, and, and not for uh, uh, just believers, but for the entire cosmos, you know, all men. Uh, you, of course, you have ideas like, you know, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, you know, that, that, that thank, that heart of gratitude. Uh, I recall one theologian, uh, he said that Jesus would be breaking the knees of everybody. Uh, and I think that's a, a, a tough pill to swallow, you know, I think it's rather appalling that even to have that idea about Jesus and what we know of him in the scriptures. You know, how can you overlook the fact where it says that uh, as an Adam all die? 
so in Christ shall all be made alive or be vivified. It's, it's, you can't restrict the second all it's in, in the sentence structure. Or, or the last dot I'll share on a verse is, uh, you know, where it says in Revelation that, um, that all of creation, you know, everyone in heaven and in earth and under earth, they f you find them blessing the Lord. Um, so with those ideas, I just don't know how someone could overlook the idea, but that's, that's how I came to embrace Christian universalism, and I've been a universalist now for like 38 years.